How long does it take to become a heating and air conditioning technician? Well, that's a tricky question. It kind of depends on the education system that they choose to use. You can go to a traditional trade school. Those programs are usually going to be at least a year. You can also, depending on the company that you, if you're fortunate enough to you know, get on with a company, you could work while you're going to school if the company will let you have that flexibility. So there's also some schools where it's a bit of a fast-tracked education because it's week-long courses that you can take. Yeah, what's that school down in Arkansas called again? Ultimate Technical oh. Academy. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. Yeah. So that's what you're talking about. They're a little bit more like abbreviated to do specific jobs. But it's specific courses, so it's not like we're going to put you through air conditioning school. Right. It's a week of refrigeration training, a week of electrical, potentially a week of installations, you know, those kind right. of things. For us, you know, there's classroom training, there's shadowing. So every program's different. It, it can be, I, I would say comfortably for you to be able to get out on your own, you should have several months of a combination of shadowing, classroom training, you need to be EPA certified, those kind of things before you can feel comfortable really going out on your own and going in front of especially residential homeowners and exuding confidence. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And so in our apprenticeship program that we have in-house, how long does that training usually last? Our program is usually eight, eight to nine months. And again, a com- combination of field shop tasks and classroom training, lab work, and stuff like that. So, okay. How long does it take to get EPA certified? Oh, that's quick. That's a, just a study guide and sign up for the test and read up okay. on it and study, 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 and then get one crack at it. And if you um, if you don't pass, you, you can take it again. But yeah, there's a quick process. So it's not a course, it's just one test to get one. a certification. Yeah. Okay. Are, is, are there any other certifications that you have to have or is EPA kind of the only one? That's really the only one. It's the one that you, you just can't handle refrigerant without it. So that's really the big one that you absolutely need. There's others that you can get that might benefit you, but it's not not mandatory. I was just thinking about this. You asked about other certifications that you need to be in the field. I'm speaking specifically locally for us. There may be parts of the country where you need and they require additional Mm -hmm. certifications to be able to be out in the field. So anybody watching this video that may contradict what they've been told, but different states have different requirements of what certification and licenses people have to have to be a technician. This is Kansas specific information, but it might be at least a jumping off point to to kind of understand the time it takes to become a technician. No, it really is different for everybody. Well, that's a good baseline. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks for the info. You're welcome.